In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to recover writable app volumes in case of a failure or disaster. In this demonstration I'm going to use synchronous replication. So in my lab environment I've prepared a primary site called London and a disaster recovery site called Amsterdam. The London cluster has a storage container for the writable volumes and the Amsterdam cluster has a container with the same name that is synchronously replicated from the London cluster. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how to set up this protection domain. Logging on to the London cluster using Prism Element, I'm going to show you that I have created a storage container called Writable App Fall. Now looking at the data protection section, you can see that I already added the remote site called Amsterdam. Logging on to the Amsterdam cluster, I can show you that I have already created the writable app for container here as well and prepared the remote site to London. Now back to the London cluster, I'm going to create a protection domain using Metro availability. So this means that the storage container I'm going to select will be synchronously replicated to the other cluster. And as you can see in my demo environment I do not have to correct licenses, but we can ignore that for now. So selecting the app full container, clicking next it will check on the remote side if the same container is available and for the fill over handling I'm going to select the manual option. So I'm not going to create a schedule because it's synchronously replicated and I'm going to create. So it's giving me a warning that the remote container will be overwritten if there's any data on it. We can see now in the London site that the protection domain is created and also active. In the Amsterdam location, the protection domain is also created and it's in standby mode. So now we're going to create a writable app volume. So I'm going to click writables and as you can see there is no writable volume at the moment. I'm going to search for my domain account. I'm going to select the volume that I've just synchronously replicated to the other location. I'm going to select the template and create immediately. And the writable app volume is created. So logging on to the London site with my user account. I'm going to see that I have access to a Windows desktop pool called Windows 10 London. And of course when you're using multiple VMware Horizon environments you can connect them together using a CloudPod architecture. But in this case I haven't done that just to show you that I'm logging on to different environments. So with writable app volumes you can use non-persistent desktops and still give the users the experience of a persistent desktop. So if a user installs applications like Google Chrome or developer tools, the app volumes agent in the guest OS will capture those installations and save them on the personal disk. So I've selected a template for writable app volumes that captures the applications that the users are going to install but also the user profile. So if I create a document on my desktop or in my documents or the application settings all those items will be saved in my writable app volume. So I'm also going to install FileZilla, just like a normal user would do, download the executable, open it, run it, and install it, next, next, finish.
So that is installed. Now also create a document on the desktop to show that the profile is also being saved by the writable app volume. Just type in some random text, save it, close it, and log off. So now I'm going to log on to the Amsterdam location, the disaster recovery desktop. And I'm going to log on first without the writable app volume to show that there is no Chrome installed or FileZilla installed or any document on my desktop. It's just a non-persistent desktop. So sign out from this desktop and quickly show you in the App Volumes Manager, in the Amsterdam location, that there are no writable volumes. Now let's pretend that there is a failure in the London site. So the London site is offline. So what we're going to do is to promote the writable app for container in the Amsterdam location. This will stop the synchronization and make the app for container active in the Amsterdam location. So as you can see it is now active and the next step is to import the writable app volumes from that container. So the path is case sensitive, I used a capital A, so I'm going to import the volumes. And there is my writable volume. So logging on to the Windows 10 desktop in Amsterdam again, hopefully my applications and my document on my desktop will be recovered. And there it is, my Nutanix App Volumes Word document is on my desktop again. I can see the Google Chrome shortcut and the FileZilla shortcut on my desktop. So, as you can see, very fast recovery of your writable volumes using Nutanix Synchronous Replication. Thank you for watching.